वेलकम ऑल आय एम मिस्टर अजित डी माळीवसेकर वर्किंग ॲज अन असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ ई एन टी सी इंजिनिअरिंग ॲट वालचंद इन्स्टिट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नॉलॉजी सोलापूर सो नाव वी विल डील विथ बीम एरिया एक्सप्रेशन सो इन प्रिवियस पार्ट दॅट इज पार्ट वन ऑफ द बीम एरिया व्हिडिओ सो वी हॅव स्टडीड व्हॉट इज प्लेन अँगल अँड व्हॉट इज थ्री डी अँगल दॅट इज सॉलिड अँगल so without knowing uh, these concepts we can't understand how to derive expression for beam area okay so at the end of this session student will be able to understand beam area parameter of an antenna so beam area is one of the parameters of the antenna and then student will be able to derive expression for this parameter that is beam area okay so what is beam area so beam area is the solid angle through which all the power radiated by the antenna would stream if p theta phi upheld its maximum value over beam area and was zero elsewhere so what is the meaning of this then that means whenever antenna is radiating energy it will not uh, at every time it will not radiate equally in all directions so beam area will be then the area surrounding the antenna through which we are getting energy from the antenna and in remaining areas surrounding the antenna we are getting zero energy that means beam area will be area surrounding the antenna through which we are getting energy okay so beam area is always specified in terms of solid angle and this solid anger angle we have already studied from first video that is the first part of this video okay now we will derive expression for beam area okay so now here we are having this sphere this is sphere so beam area we are specifying in terms of solid angle and solid angle means it is a angle subtended by a circular surface area at the center of the circle sorry at the center of sphere having radius r that we have already studied from previous part okay so now we will calculate beam area expression or that is derive expression for beam area so now here we are having sphere this is a sphere uh, we are having three dimensional uh, structure that is z x and y now to calculate beam area as it is, it is nothing but the solid angle so first we will calculate for solid angle okay so beam area is nothing but solid angle of the antenna through which we are getting energy so now this is a sphere now consider small incremental area da this is a da this rectangular small incremental area da okay so now how to calculate this incremental area first okay so now here this is a rectangular area so to calculate area we have to multiply with these two sides that is length and width of the rectangle so we here we are having two as this is a incremental area so here we are having two components one is vertical length and horizontal length okay so this vertical length okay see on the uh, mouse point so this vertical length that is we will call it as a dlv okay that is incremental length in vertical direction and this will be this will be incremental length in horizontal direction we will consider it as a dlh okay this will be horizontal length and this will be vertical length now we can calculate incremental surface area by multiplying these two component that is dlv and dlh that is the rectangle so we will get this incremental surface area of this sphere okay now first we will calculate vertical component that is the dlv this component so this component is nothing but the arc so this arc we can calculate that is we have already studied from plane angle concept so this arc okay so this arc we can calculate by this r into this theta 
so here theta we are taking as a d theta because this is a incremental angle for incremental length okay so from previous video that is in plane angle we studied how to calculate arc length that is r into theta so here we can say r into this angle d theta so this vertical incremental length okay this vertical incremental length will be dl v is equal to r into d theta just like r theta here we are taking d theta because angle is incremental that is small okay so now we are having component in vertical direction for this incremental area okay so now again for we have to calculate for horizontal component also for horizontal component again radius will be r as it is and then arc length will be r into d phi phi because for horizontal component that means this this horizontal component we are having horizontal angle that is varying from 0 to 2 pi that is the phi angle for horizontal locations so similar to dlv we can calculate dlh as r d phi but there is little bit problem in horizontal component what is the main reason then for vertical component it is okay it is exactly similar to the plane angle concept but in in, uh, in horizontal component the problem is see here i am uh, okay see the moment of cursor so this is a vertical component see the moment of cursor this is a vertical uh, sorry this is horizontal component the problem with this horizontal component is it is zero when theta is zero okay our theta theta varies from zero to zero to 180 theta varies from 0 to 180 so now the problem with this horizontal component is its length is 0 when theta is 0 as we increase value of theta what happens this incremental length in horizontal direction is increasing and when angle theta is 90 degree okay at y see in x y plane at y axis when angle theta is 90 degree length of the horizontal component is maximum that is okay length of the horizontal component is maximum again when we increase theta that is above 90 degree what will happen again this length will decrease and this horizontal length will be zero when theta will be 180 at the second pole of the sphere this concept is exactly similar to longitude of the earth so now what can we do then because this dlh is equal to r d pi it will not give correct value because if theta changes this incremental length will increase or decrease so what can we do then so we have to take one function and multiply with that function and that function should its value should be zero when theta is zero and its value will be maximum when theta is 90 degree and again beyond 90 degree if we increase angle theta its value should be decreasing and it will be zero at theta equal to 180 degree so this function is sine theta right sine function so sine function's value is zero when angle is zero its value is maximum and maximum value is one and its value maximum is when angle is 90 degree and again beyond 90 degree sine function decreases and become zero when angle theta becomes 180 so we have to take this function and multiply this function with r d phi now we are having correct formula for horizontal incremental length okay so now horizontal incremental length will be this horizontal increment length will be r d phi into sin theta okay now how we have uh, taken sin theta the reason is this horizontal incremental length is increasing and decreasing with respect to theta now by multiplying this vertical and horizontal component we are getting this incremental area right so multiply this that is da is equal to dlv into dlh so we will get this da that is incremental surface area okay 
So this d a is equal to by putting the values r d theta into r d phi sin theta. So d a will be r square sin theta d theta d phi. Okay. Now we are having incremental surface area. Now we have to go for incremental solid angle. Okay, because beam area is always specified in terms of solid angle. Now we will calculate for incremental solid angle. What is the formula of solid angle? We are having circuit uh, here. Con uh, don't consider as a circular. So just to consider, we are having formula for beam area or uh, solid angle is surface area divided by r square. Okay, formula for solid angle is surface area divided by r square. So here this incremental length, uh, this incremental area is very small. Okay, so although it is uh, although it is rectangular, but we will consider it as a circular. So by putting the values, we will get value of solid angle. So d a is r square sine theta d theta d phi divided by r square. So incremental beam angle will be sine theta d theta d phi. Okay. Now. if we integrate if we integrate this incremental solid angle over a sphere that is from theta 0 to pi and phi 0 to 2 pi what will happen we will get solid angle of a entire sphere but this is not our case because we want to calculate for beam area of a antenna every time we if we integrate this equation we will get answer as a 4 pi that is the 4 pi is the beam uh, sorry 4 pi is a solid angle of a sphere but antenna always not radiates equally in all direction so antenna's beam area which is in terms of solid angle will be always less than 4 pi so if we integrate this we will get 4 pi every time so this equation will be totally wrong so what can we do then if we multiply this equation okay this sin theta d theta d phi with power that is normalized power p theta phi so we will get exact solid angle through which antenna is radiating power because in uh, wherever antenna is radiating power wherever antenna is radiating power only in these directions we will calc we will get results of the integration and in remaining areas where antenna is not radiating power so we will get zero as the result of integration so at the final uh, result of the integration we will get solid angle only for that zone of the antenna in which antenna is radiating its energy so this will be the solid angle and it that is nothing but the beam area of the antenna this will be the expression again this sin theta d theta d phi is nothing but our incremental solid angle we can replace this equation and we can rewrite the equation we are integrating over a sphere and the solid angle of the sphere is 4 pi so double we are taking double integration over 4 pi and multiplying incremental solid angle or incremental beam area with power so this will give beam area of the antenna okay so this is the expression for beam area of the antenna so these are the references thank you